Even before you meet Elsa Hull, you'll certainly know what's on her mind as you enter her property. It would just be a total destruction of my, my life. The 51-year-old mother of two lives in the oh, tiny town of San Ignacio, Texas. There is no border wall on or near her three acres, yet. When you heard this report, and the White House doesn't deny it, they say President Trump was joking when he was talking about pardoning people who started construction of the wall without following the legal regulations, environmental regulations. Do you believe he could have been joking? Why would he be joking? They're willing to break every law there is out there. Elsa Hall believes the president's words mean her property, where she's lived for almost two decades, could be taken by the government at any time for construction of a barrier. I cannot convey how angry I am. I'm standing right on the international borderline, adjacent to Elsa Hall's property. This is the Rio Grande. Doesn't look like it though, because portions of it are dry this time of year. So it looks like it would be very easy to cross from Mexico into the United States right now. But it's far from any major population centers. In 20 years, how many people have you seen crossing the Rio Grande from Mexico to the United States? Absolutely zero in this location, zero. I trip sensors all the time, even here and other places along the river and border patrol will magically appear in the middle of nowhere. I'm tripping sensors. The technology works. They don't need a wall. Hull says she was told earlier this year by a border patrol supervisor that a wall was, quote, going to happen on her property and throughout this area. After she heard that, she painted this on her roof. And now the president's pardon comment has made her scared that her life may be about to change forever. The international border of the Rio Grande is 200 yards to our left. That's the border. Yes. But you've been told by a Border Patrol chief in this area that it's going to happen a wall yes. and that it could go through your land. They'll seek to buy your land or then take it if you won't give it up or put it just to the north of your land, right. putting you in the middle of and a it, no man's land. Mm -hmm. The wall would be there, but the international border would be here and you'd be between two countries. Yeah. I mean, and, and would, could you live like that between two countries? I would not leave. I can't leave. She says she's been worried about this possibility throughout the entire Trump presidency. I don't think there has been a day gone by since all this started that I am not in tears at one point or another over all this. But now that concern has reached a much higher level. They're going to have to drag me off of here. I'm not leaving willingly. There's just no way. <laughs> I can't leave my home. Gary Tuckman, CNN, San Ignacio, Texas. One congressman who hears a great deal about these kinds of concerns and represents the district where that woman Gary Profile lives is Texas Democrat Henry Cuellar. I spoke with him earlier. Congressman Cuellar, what do you say to your constituents who might be afraid that the president is going to take their land with maybe outgoing through the proper legal channels? You know, I'm very concerned that the president uh, is, is even saying things like, don't worry, if you uh, get it done, even violate the law, I will pardon you. Whether he said that joking around or whatever way he said it, that's wrong. We have to respect private property rights. We have to respect private property rights. There are some of my constituents that have owned land along the Rio Grande for so many generations. And for the president to come in and, and say that he's going to take land uh, is just the wrong way. If you look at this, if the president gets all the fencing that he wants to get, all the fencing in the state of Texas, for the first time in American history, we will have a president that will cede over 1.1 million acres. 1.1 million mm. acres, and that is wrong. Have you seen any evidence at this point that the administration has started doing this to, to go around the eminent domain process? Has it started happening yet in your district? Well, you know, we, we, we're looking at that. Uh, today, I'm, I'm uh, in the southern part of my district, and I've been hearing from folks that they're starting to do surveys and they're starting to get into properties to, to, to do the surveys. Again, I don't know. This is something that uh, we are going to investigate. But the problem is the president and the administration have to respect mm -hmm. the law. Uh, there is a thing called eminent domain that you have to go through the courts and you have to respect the law. Well, if they start going around the eminent domain process, what will you do? How will you help your constituents fight? 
Well, you know, certainly uh, uh, two things. I mean, certainly I, I will be talking to uh, the Secretary of Homeland, uh, Kevin McEnany. He's a good man, and I know that he, he will do everything to respect the law, talk to the local Border Patrol chiefs to make sure that they understand that the members of Congress are watching and we don't want them to circumvent the, the law. And, of course, appropriations is another way. The problem is, is by the time we do appropriations, which could be by the end of the year in December, uh, if there's any damage that could be done, that will be uh, something. The reporting you mentioned from earlier this week that the president offered to pardon any officials who might break the law in their attempt to make sure a large portion of the wall is built. The White House says the president was joking, but do you believe officials would actually do it, break the law for the president? Well, you know, even joking around, uh, you shouldn't even say that. Uh, I, the, you know, the people that I know, the Border Patrol uh, folks, the chiefs that I know in the Loreto sector, in the Rio Grande uh, sector, which is down in this area, they're good men. They're good men uh, that are trying to do their job. I don't think they would do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly I will uh, make sure that we work together, that we follow the law. But uh, the men and women that I know that are serving down here, I know they're not going to do that. Some of your colleagues say if the stories are true, it constitutes an abuse of power by the president. Is this something you think should be investigated? Yeah, I, I mean, certainly. I mean, I, I think there are committees and, uh, that will be looking into this. Uh, and again, you know, we don't know. Uh, you know, he said it was a joke. But again, you can't say that because there's been... Too many, uh, too many actions that, you know, after one, after another one that the president keeps doing, even if he jokes around, we're going to think that it's true. So I hope that the president uh, just understand that he's not joking around. You can't make fun mm -hmm. of people that have had lands for generations, and we got to respect those private property rights of those individuals. Congressman Cuellar, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much.